And it just kind of ripped my heart out. And I thought, what kind of world is it that we're living in that we have young girls growing up like this, we have people that want this, mm -hmm. and we have people forcing young girls to grow up like this, young girls and boys. Welcome to the Bourbon Friday Show, where every Friday we take a short break, try a new bourbon, and meet someone awesome from the St. Louis startup scene. I'm your host, Nick Niehaus, and today I'm interviewing Don Mansky, who is the founder of Made for Freedom. So Don, welcome to the show. Thank you so much. I'm happy to be here. Yeah, we're happy to have you. So let's just start with a simple background, because I know that Made for Freedom has a very different story than a lot of startups in town. So right, why don't you tell right. us kind of the mission and how you decided to get started? Okay, well, Made for Freedom partners with centers around the world to empower women rescued from sex trafficking and marginalized situations. And the way we ended up there was, I could say there was three things coming together. It was, it was all sorts of things. Okay. But I will say, I lived in China for 10 years. I saw human trafficking firsthand. Really? And okay. it wasn't really called that, but there were kids coming in from very poor areas that were being used as slave labor. Wow. And a friend of mine helped me understand that she started a school for them. And I helped these kids and I got to know these kids that have been trafficked mm -hmm. and helped them go to new places and do new things. And then I came back to the United States. And while I was in grad school, I think in my mind, that was kind of something that was happening there. Sure. And then I saw a video of an undercover recording. A, an undercover reporter went in and he was in the back streets of Cambodia asking for the youngest girls he could find. Mm -hmm. And it just kind of ripped my heart out. And I thought, what kind of world is it that we're living in that we have young girls growing up like this, we have people that want this, mm -hmm. and we have people forcing young girls to grow up like this, young girls and boys. And it just weighed on me. I bet, it, yeah. It just, every conversation I had, if I was talking to somebody and they started whining about not having the most recent smartphone, yeah. it just, it bet, just yeah. grated on me. And I was like, you don't understand. This is not a problem. Like there's a, there are girls being sold for sex. That's a problem. Mm -hmm. You not having the latest smartphone is not. And it just like it, everything just revolved around this because I didn't know how to get involved. I didn't know what I could do to help fight this. Sure. So fast forward three years, I end up at a dinner with this incredibly handsome young man and married him. Okay. So well, made quite out. an impression. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and for our wedding, he gave me a pair of sandals that really helped me understand social enterprise. Mm -hmm. And these sandals were made by women in Uganda mm -hmm. that without that job would not have been able to further their education and mm -hmm. would have ended up in desperate situations okay. and very vulnerable. And I just thought, that's so cool. I have these cool sandals and it's got this cool story and it's helping women in a very practical way. And another wedding gift that I received was a gift from a friend of mine, which was five pairs of Thai fisherman pants. Okay. Hmm. I had one pair previously, loved them. So f fisherman pants, what do these look like? Fisherman pants, they yeah. are super comfortable. They're wide, they're, they, when you open them up, they look huge. Because okay. they are. No, yeah. they don't look huge. They're huge. <laughs> but you wrap them to fit yourself. Oh, okay. And then you have a belt on there and you tie it. So it fits any shape, any size. Wow, it's, okay. They're really fun. And they're super comfortable. Hmm. So I wore them all the time. She brought me like five more pair. And I just, I was like, oh my gosh, this is great. So the next day going on the honeymoon, uh -huh. what am I wearing? Fisherman pants. I'm wearing assume, my new right? pants, yeah. of course, and my new sandals. <laughs> and a TSA agent st basically says, I love your pants. Where'd you get them? Really? When was the okay. last time a TSA agent coming I'm on your pants? Trying not to talk to them, to be honest. Right. You know? yeah. But did they ever stop and say, hey, I like no, your clothes? They have not, no, 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 it doesn't <laughs> happen often. And then we get on the plane, and like the flight attendant comments on my pants. Oh, really? Wow. And that just began this crazy onslaught of women coming up to me. A woman chased me through a parking lot to ask me about these pants. Wow, okay. And I'm like, I love so these pants. There, yeah. yeah, something yeah. is going on. Huh. I love these pants. You can't find them in the United States, not easily. Mm -hmm. And all these women love it too. 
And then I'm thinking about social enterprise. I'm like, maybe these pants could be the foundation of a business that could mm. help women or help people. And if I'm going to help people, I want to help people that have been rescued from this or are at risk. Okay. Gotcha. So that was the beginning of Made for Freedom. Very cool. And so since- So Fisherman Pants was the first product? Well, you know what we did? Uh huh. Fisherman Pants, to be completely honest, huge. The backside is very baggy. Okay. Kind of looks like a diaper. Oh, okay. Well, we redesigned them. Oh, okay. So cool. we took the Fisherman Pant, we kept the really wide waist, so it's really fun. Mm -hmm. We changed the back seam so it is much more appealing, much okay. more pleasant. Gotcha. And figure flattering Important, and yeah. mm -hmm. I thought well we changed the design we should probably change the name so we call them Korea belly pants okay which is taken from creating a beautiful life oh cool okay. so we got our first order of Korea belly pants in 2014 and we were an arch grant recipient that year yeah, as well it came like while I was in the final stages of preparing for arch grants oh really okay. our pants arrived our first order and since then we have partnered with over 15 centers around the world, all of which are providing dignified employment. And the original center that we partnered with uh -huh. sent an email and said, our ladies are getting great opportunities to further their education and start careers, which is wonderful. Yeah, like that's, that's amazing. amazing. And we're not gonna sew anymore. Nope. Okay. okay. <laughs> so, it worked too well, huh? <laughs> all that said, if you go yeah. to the, if you go to our page right now, uh, you're not going to see a lot of pants because we're now in process of getting a new, like we're partnering with new centers, new gotcha. fabric, new yeah. everything. So April 2000, which will be five years from our first order arriving, mm -hmm. five years later, we will have a redesign of the oh, Korea okay. belly pants along with a few other pieces. So it'll be the Korea belly collection. Oh, okay. Cool. And yeah, and we've generated over 14,000 hours of dignified employment. Wow, that's amazing. 14 centers. We have jewelry, we have, we're going lifestyle brand, we have bath and body products, we've got leather bags, we've got fabric bags, we've got scarves, t-shirts. Wow. So tell me about, you know, you started with the pants, right? Yep. And that was kind of the, the beginning of all of this. Um, how do you choose the next product? So how have you kind of chosen to develop the line? Is it based on the kind of work that you can have done mm -hmm. at these centers or how did you choose the, the next things that you've been producing? Good question. It's a, it's a combination. Okay. So depending on the level of the center, it might be, okay, what fabrics do you have at the market? Mm -hmm. And then they send a picture and hmm, okay. I, I zoom in and I snapshot and I send it back. I'm like, I want this one and this one and this one. And hmm. so there's that. Okay, so interesting story with that. One of the centers in Thailand, things that you don't think you're gonna deal with. The king died. Okay. A couple years ago, we were right in the middle of like getting ready to place an order for some fabric. Yeah. All colors were forbidden. And oh, okay. like, of mourning, the entire or, country yeah. went into mourning. Everyone oh, had to wear black. <laughs> okay. And the fabric, the color fabric, they sent me a picture one week and it was like a wall full of colorful fabric. Sure. The king died, all of this stuff. And it was like an official month. The, oh, wow. some of the, like the political figures, it was a year of mourning. Like they had to wear black for a wow, year. Gotcha. Everything in all the shops, so everything the went shops black. Even stopped selling colors black. at all. Wow. Everything That's went. An interesting effect on business. Yeah. Right. <laughs> and so it went from a wall full of colors to mm -hmm. like eight. Okay. And I was yeah. like, mm, that one, that one, that one, get them. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but then some of the centers have, are much more established and okay. they are, they're very well established and they've been around a lot longer. So we just look at the products that they have and we're like, okay, how can we meet our market? And one of the things that I like to do, I, I want to appeal to professional women. Sure. And as much as I love the tribal look and bright colors and prints, I don't want to have a fair trade look. Gotcha. I, not, Fair trade is amazing. Sure. And it's and we carry a lot of fair trade products, but sometimes there's that look. Yeah, you want to the, cater to the audience you're designing for as opposed yeah. to Yeah. Gotcha. So we we really try to carry products that professional women would hmm. appreciate and okay. be comfortable wearing every day, as well as the fun and the colorful items. Sure. Is that something you have to give these centers a lot of feedback and guidance on, or are they generally set up to make those kinds of products already or? Some of them are. for you, yeah. Some of them are not. 
um, we have a tweed purse mm -hmm. that the woman who made it, and when I went to visit Thailand, they, they had this purse that was beautiful, mm -hmm. and it was this great structure. And I said, okay, we could do something really great with this. Can you grab that tweed, tweed purse for me? Oh yeah, I got a little demo that, here. Yeah, yeah, that's that cool. is the purse. Okay. So she. Oh wow. And so this is I've been carrying this puppy for a long time. So she had a structure like this, and she was doing tribal bright prints sure. and a woven like rope thing for the handle. It okay. didn't feel yeah. good, but the structure is like solid. Sure. So we went to the market and I saw this fabric, which is basically upholstery. It's very sturdy. Sure. Okay. And I saw it and I was like, oh my gosh, brown or black. That's mm -hmm. great. You don't have to change purses. And she was like, you like that fabric? <laughs> really? And she said, you do want the ribbon up here with the elephants, right? <laughs> and I was like, no, not for this one. Yeah. And then I saw handles like this and I said, I want handles like this. Hmm. And she went back to the market and she just refused. She's really? like, those are too expensive. And I said, no, this is, this is going to be a really nice purse. Sure. She went and she found leather and she figured out how to make them. Oh, really? <laughs> and so she was learning new skills yeah. while she was trying to meet what I was designing and what I was giving That's her. That's awesome, yeah. And we ended up with these amazing bags. And finally at the end, she was like, okay, it's a nice purse. Oh, really? <laughs> she <laughs> finally really, admitted it, huh? <laughs> the whole development of it was so foreign to her. It's, yeah. what, it's a very Western looking purse. Sure, yeah. And she just, yeah, it hmm. was, Interesting. Yeah, but at least they're willing to, to work it out with you. Sounds oh, like. yeah. 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 So uh, we're getting obviously very close to the holidays. And I would imagine yes. that you've probably sold a lot of product already as gifts. But right, if right. someone I mean, what's cool about this, obviously, is that it's not just a product. There's obviously a great mission and right. story behind it. So if someone is looking for a gift, do they still have time to order from you? Or is it too late in terms of shipping? Or what, what route should they take? There? Well, there are a few ways to go about it. Okay. So if by chance someone's watching, and you go to the website and you see some things you really love, mm -hmm. if there's a little heart in the top right, and that's your wish list. So if you have anyone in your life, I tell people, if you have anyone in your life that is shopping challenged, you sure. can create mm -hmm. a wish list and you tag anything on the website that you like, you can tag that with a heart and the, the website will generate a URL. You oh. can send it to the shopping challenge and say, within here, you're safe. <laughs> and then it's all good. Cool. Okay. So that's one. There is still time for shipping mm -hmm. if you want to buy something for someone else. But if you're not sure what they want, and this can go until like two hours before your party, okay. we have gift certificates as well. Oh, perfect. So okay. Christmas, we got you covered. There you go. So the definitely challenge. That's a good option. The shopping challenge. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. And then do you sell? I, I, I thought I saw on the site that you also sell in some stores as well. Is there other places somebody could walk into and, and pick up some of the products? Or We have we have product in an assortment of places around the country. Okay. So a couple like west of St. Louis, north of St. Louis, some other states. Off the top of my head, I'm not coming up with them. But oh, yes. yeah, it's all, it's all over the place then. Right. Cool. Right. Gotcha. Awesome. All right. Um, and I want to ask you about one other thing in particular, which was I know you had um, on your site, you know, you have a couple other ways for people to get involved mm. in the mission a little bit. So mm -hmm. can you tell me about what's going on there? Yeah, it's it's a it's a new program that we've developed. Mm -hmm. And what has happened, we have been selling at events and we've been selling through retailers. And I, on a regular basis, get people that hear about Made for Freedom mm -hmm. and they're, they're so passionate and they're like, oh my gosh, I've been learning about this and this is horrible, but what you're doing is really cool. How can I get more involved? Sure. And I totally get it because I started by saying, I've un I'm understanding trafficking and mm -hmm. I want to do something. So th I'm meeting these people that are saying, I want to do more. How can I do it? Hmm. And as much as you know, I could say, hey, start a business, but it's really hard. Yeah, it's a lot of work. <laughs> and so I started thinking, sure. yeah. right. And a lot of these people are not looking to start a business. Mm -hmm. So I thought, what is there any way I could give them everything they need to make significant impact? Hmm. And so we have unrolled this um, new program called DEEP. Okay. So we call them DEEP Fashion Events. And DEEP stands for Dignified Employment Empowers and Protects. Hmm. 
because we talk about that a lot and how these jobs are making a difference in women's lives. So they're called deep fashion events. Okay. And on the outside, it looks like a home party or an, a fashion party. Sure. We start, we piloted with advocacy parties. Okay. <laughs> and my friends were like, I'm having a hard time calling this a party. Yeah. Because what we do is we send a presentation and we talk about the five key components of exploitation. We okay. talk about vulnerabilities and perpetrators. And it's not it's an stuff, easy yeah. topic. Sure. And so it doesn't feel like a party, but it's good to know. Mm -hmm. Like it's information that we need to know. So we send a presentation and we send a box of product okay. so you can learn about the issue and you can be part of the solution. That's great, yeah. And so these can go anywhere across the country. Okay, gotcha. Yeah. So just something they can go sign up to, to host one of these events on yeah. the website? They can or go what's to the join the like? fight. So if okay. you go to madeforfreedom.com, mm -hmm. one of the top tabs says join the fight. And you can go there and it has a link to the gift certificates and the wish list. Okay. But then down at the bottom, it says, hey, I wanna do more. I wanna go deep. That's awesome. Cool. Sounds like a great way for people to get involved. So Well, and I will say January is National Slavery and Human Trafficking Prevention Month. Okay. So that's a really amazing way to kind of like, so sign up, we can start getting you ready. And obviously it's too late for December, mm -hmm. but next year sometime, but January is, is this national month trying to prevent this horrible atrocity. Gotcha. So it's a good time to, to it's get a involved, great time. obviously. Yeah. Cool, awesome. Well, we got a couple minutes left, so okay. we're gonna invite the founder of Bourbon Friday himself, Eric, onto the show, and he is going to introduce the bourbon this week. Sure. Uh, so this bourbon is a Old Forester 1870, and we always try to relate it back to the guest and that kind of thing. So I, I did a lot of research over the last uh, last uh, couple weeks, really. Um, and it turns out that Brown Foreman, uh, the company that not only does Jack Daniels, but Old Forester and, and Woodford Reserve. They're kind of a very good corporate citizen. Old Forester um, w worked with uh, Onchal, the Onchal project in Louisville, and and they did a program where they had f a series of five events across the country, and they matched the tips mm. of the bartenders, and then gave that to the Onchal project. Nice. And Onchal um, provides dig dignified employment for women sex workers in India. Oh, wow. Yeah. Nice. And in addition to that, Woodford, uh, Woodford Reserve um, partners with uh, the Lincoln Cottage. Mm -hmm. And Lincoln Cottage, um, one of their main programs besides the preservation of this historic site is to continue the work of Abraham Lincoln to mm -hmm. uh, stop human trafficking. Oh, as well. wow. So, That's so I cool. figured that bringing Old Forester on from Brown Foreman would be appropriate for this. Yeah. Well done. I'm impressed. <laughs> <laughs> Who knew there was a bourbon that could tie I mean, well? Eric usually does. Yeah, he's, he's pretty good did, at this, actually. I did not yeah. know, but I, I do know how <laughs> to research, research things. There you yeah. go. So. That's awesome. Yeah. Well, thank, well you. thank you. Thank you, Eric, for joining us mm -hmm. as always. Um, now, I don't think we have as much going on next week no, in terms of holidays, startup events. Holidays, kinda, I don't really think there's much going holiday on. Holiday parties, next, there's a, uh, a chilly cook-off happening next week at exactly. some point. I'm yeah. going to be gone. There so. is a chilly cook-off here at T-Rex. If you want to come, it's $5. It goes uh, to help a family of a T-Rex member. Oh, mm -hmm. very cool. All right. Awesome. Well, I think we're about out of time. Eric, thanks for joining us mm -hmm. as always. Dawn, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you for sharing your mission with us, and we appreciate what you're doing. Well, thank um, you. For those of you watching, this actually is my last show for a couple weeks. I'm going to be out of town on vacation next week. Looking forward to that. Eric is probably going to have something special for you in place of the show, so make sure to tune in still. You're not going to want to miss <laughs> that. Uh, in the meantime, thanks for tuning in to the Bourbon Friday show, which we do here at T-Rex every Friday at 4.30. So thank you to T-Rex for hosting us. Thank you to EQ for streaming our show through the Facebook page every single week. And then, of course, thank you to Vanessa Lobo, my business partner at Connect Marketing, for producing for us. Uh, thanks, and I'll see you in three weeks. Hey, thanks for watching. We truly hope you enjoyed it. Please like and share this episode. And if you haven't yet, hit that subscribe button. It really helps us out. To stay up to date, follow us on social. We are at Bourbon Fridays on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, LinkedIn, and TikTok. See you next time.